All right, time to get complicated. Let's ask ourselves, what are neural network time series models? There are so many different time series models out there. You have some of the more statistical focused models like we've been discussing in this series so far, like exponential smoothing, ARIMA, which consists of autoregressive and moving average, seasonal ARIMA, and that only scratches the surface. However, let's jump over to the other side of the fence, the more mathematical and machine learning based approaches. Let's talk about autoregressive neural network models. Wait, you don't fully remember what a neural network model is? All right, all right, all right. Let's briefly refresh on neural networks. Neural network models have a certain structure to them. First, you have the input layer. There, you'll find all of your predictor variables in the model. Then you have your output layer. That is your target variable. All of these circles here are referred to as nodes. These layers are connected through a series of weights. We apply a weight to each input. Then we're going to perform a linear combination of these inputs and weights. Put them together through optimizing these weights to best predict the target. Now you have your most basic neural network. Wait. It kind of looks like a linear regression model. It is. However, the things that make neural networks more complicated than linear regression are the hidden layers that typically exist between the input and output layer. These hidden layers, that's where all the magic happens. All of the nonlinearities, the interactions of the variables get added to the model here. Let's break down one of these hidden layer nodes. All of the inputs go into each node. These inputs are weighted as they go into the node. Again, we combine these weights and inputs together. We still have that same linear combination here that we'll just call Z. These weights, the coefficients on the variables, and the bias, the intercept term, are again structured like a linear regression. But now we apply a nonlinear transformation on this linear combination Z. Here we use the logistic function as our nonlinear transformation, but there are a variety of different ones that you can use here. Do this for all of the nodes in the hidden layer. Weight each output from each hidden layer node to connect to the next layer. Now, you can have many hidden layers. Here, we just use an example with one hidden layer. By the time you get to the end, again, we combine everything together. We optimize the weights throughout this whole process. Formally, it's called backpropagation. There's gradient descent. There's, oh God, there's a chain rule and a, a lot of bad memories from my calculus days. But either way, we'll have to cover that in another video. Okay, good. Review over. But where does the autoregressive part come into play? Well, instead of just thinking of common predictor variables, we can think of the input layer full of lagged values of the target instead. The real question now becomes, how many lags do we put in the model? Just like with everything, many different ways to do this. We could easily use some of the same ways we talked about with the REMA models, where we explore correlation plots or use some automatic selection techniques. If you don't remember some of the automatic selection techniques like you see here that we talked about previously, click on the link in the upper right hand corner for the ARIMA video. Now, if you have seasonal data, it's always good practice to include all the lags through at least one season. Oh, last thing, don't forget, even though we're getting fancy with the models here, you still have lags predicting a target. Best to make sure your data is stationary first. Again, for a refresher on stationarity, click on the link in the upper right hand corner. Whew. Oh boy, well, we've covered a lot. So what are neural network time series models? Those are neural network time series models in under five minutes.